Good evening, everybody. It's Steve Luckner with Right Side Broadcasting, or good morning, as the case may be, depending on where you are. We wanted to come on and do a special uh, late night live stream to update you on some news which uh, happened this past evening and is going to uh, maybe cause a little of uh, difficulty, confusion tomorrow at the CFPB, which is the Key Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So uh, last week, the head of the, well, actually, was it, was it last week that he resigned? See, now I don't remember. Anyways, there is a succession crisis at the Consumer Financial uh, Protection Bureau because the director resigned uh, and um, he appointed a deputy director who uh, he intended to take his place, but President Trump appointed a different temporary director to take his place. And now we seem to have two different people claiming to be the director of the CFPB uh, who both might show up to work tomorrow. So we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, now and go over it and get your feedback on it. If you have comments on this story, you can write to me while we're on the air uh, at Lookner on Twitter at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. It's kind of a complex story with lots of details. So I'm going to try to just basically kind of sum it up somewhat simply for you if possible. But I wanted to just clarify. See, as I was talking here, I realized one detail I wanted to uh, just clear up is when did um, the previous director, uh, Richard Cordroy, Cord Ray, when did he resign? Let's see here. He resigned on November 24th. Let's see. Or did he announce he was going to leave and then his official last day was November 24th? Is that what it was? See, this is what I'm trying to figure it out. I can't figure it out. Anyways, the last day of his service was Friday. The last day of his service was Friday. So as of Friday was the last day of this person, Richard Cordray, being the head of the CFPB. Now, before Richard Cordray uh, left the CFPB, he appointed somebody named Leandra English to be the deputy director of the CFPB. Now, the CFPB is this Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. It was a, uh, it's a government body that was created uh, by the Dodd-Frank bill uh, in 2010 after the financial crisis. And it's supposed to be this watchdog body that protects consumers in areas like uh, mortgages and payday loans and student loans. Um, and uh, it's a body that can uh, take action against uh, different, you know, for example, people who make loans uh, who uh, uh, they don't who they don't think are uh, being fair to consumers, roughly speaking. So uh, this Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, uh, this director, Richard Cordray, he left office on Friday was his last day in office. Before he left office, he appointed uh, Leandra, Leandra English to be deputy director. And under Dodd-Frank, under the law that created the CFPB, uh, the deputy director becomes the acting director when the director leaves until the next director is appointed. So President Trump eventually gets to appoint the successor to Richard Cordray. The question at issue here is who gets to be the director once Richard Cordray leaves, which he did on Friday, and before the next director is appointed by President Trump and is confirmed by the Senate. So the next director is appoint, got to be appointed by President Trump and confirmed by the Senate. So the question is, who gets to be the director, the interim director, in between Friday, when Richard Cordray left, and the next director taking over who needs to be appointed by President Trump and confirmed by the Senate? Who gets to be interim director? That's the question here. So Richard Cordray, the director who just left, he appointed a deputy director, but President Trump didn't want that person to be director. President Trump wanted Mick Mulvaney to be the acting director. Uh, and Mick, Mick Mulvaney is currently the uh, office, the director of the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget. And what President Trump did is he appointed Mick Mulvaney to be the interim director of the CFPB. So again, to sum up, Richard Cordray, this guy, was director of CFPB. He left on Friday. Uh, he appointed a successor 
the deputy director, who according to the law that created the CFPB, the deputy director becomes the interim director when the acting director leaves. However, President Trump also appointed an interim director and President Trump's choice for interim director was Mick Mulvaney. And President Trump um, says, and the White House says, President Trump has the right to appoint the interim director under something called the uh, Vacancies Reform Act. Am I getting that right? The Vacancies Reform Act? I hope I'm saying that the right way. I believe I am. Let's see if I can. Federal Vacancies Reform Act. So we have two different people who, who I guess there's two different claims on who gets to be the interim director of the CFPB starting tomorrow because they're back at work tomorrow. Now what happened is President Trump appointed Mick Mulvaney and uh, Mick Mulvaney was planning on taking over. Uh, but what happened is last night, Leandra English, who was the one Richard Cordray chose to be his successor, who is the current deputy director of CFBB, but who was not going to be the actual interim director because President Trump appointed Mick Mulvaney, she filed a lawsuit. And her lawsuit that she filed last night asked a judge to stop President Trump's choice from Mick, Mick Mulvaney from taking over the CFPB as the interim director because she says she is the rightful interim director and that President Trump does not have the right to name the interim director of the CFPB. So, so uh, it looked like Mick Mulvaney was going to walk in tomorrow and just be the act interim director of the CFPB because he was appointed by President Trump. But the woman who was originally supposed to be the interim director, who the who the, who the previous interim director chose as his successor, she filed a lawsuit. And her lawsuit she filed, she's being represented by private lawyers. So she, she's not being represented by like government lawyers. This is a, a lawsuit that this person, this woman, Leanda Eng English, uh, who, wa who was appointed the, success the successor by the previous director, she's basically suing and say, wait, saying, wait, I'm supposed to be the interim director You've got to stop President Trump from naming an interim director, a different interim director, because I'm supposed to be the interim director. So she's suing with private lawyers to prevent President Trump from appointing a different interim director than her. That's basically what's happening here. So I don't, that was my best uh, effort at simply explaining the background here, but that probably was kind of hard to follow. But anyways, I, I want to give you some more details here. I just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes, you can hear me fine. So I'm not even done giving you the background on this. But before I do, I want to say, uh, if you have comments on this, write to me at, at Lookner on Twitter, at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. We're going to be taking your comments uh, very soon. Um, so now that I've laid out what basically is going on, that we have this, we have... We have two different people who think they're supposed to be director. We have President Trump's choice, Mick Mulvaney, who was appointed by President Trump. And we have this woman, Leandra English, who was appointed by the previous director. And she's now suing to prevent President Trump's choice, Mick Mulvaney, from becoming the interim director because she thinks she should be the interim director. So now that we have that background out of the way, uh, let's talk about a couple more things that happened last night. Well, first of all, the Justice Department came out with a ruling, the Justice Department, where they said President Trump does have the right to appoint, appoint the interim director. So let's see if I can explain this. Under the, under the law, under the Dodd-Frank law that created the CFPB, that law says if there's a vacancy in the director's seat, the deputy director becomes director. So according to the Dodd-Frank law that created the CFPB, Leander English, Leandra English becomes the interim director because she's the deputy director. However, there's another law, the Federal Vacancies Reform Act, uh, which says, according to the Justice Department and according to the White House, it says the president has the right to appoint uh, an interim director and an executive in a vacant executive office like this one. So it's basically, we have the, we have the Dodd-Frank law, which created uh, the CFPB. And that says that the, uh, that, that, that Leandra English 
can be the deputy director, but the Federal Vacancies Reform Act says the president's appointee, uh, Mick Mulvaney, can be the deputy director. And what happened is the Justice Department tonight re released this ruling. They actually, they actually, uh, the office, the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel issued a ruling on this tonight. And what they basically say is they say, look, we agree that the law that created the CFPB says that if there's a vacancy, uh, the deputy director becomes direct can, uh, becomes director. How, however, they said, but that's not the only law which talks about uh, appointing an interim director. They say the Federal Vacancies Reform Act also says the president can reform can can uh, appoint the interim director. So. Basically, what they say is they say just because the Dodd-Frank law says the deputy director becomes a director if there's an if there's an absent, if there's a vacancy in the director position, uh, they say that in itself only applies if the president doesn't appoint someone because they say the Federal Vacancies Reform Act gives the president to appoint the interim director if the president wants to. So. In this argument here, they go through and they basically say, you know, it's like a seven page argument and it gets kind of technical. But, you know, they go through different things. I'm just trying to think if I can find a place that sums up what they say here. Uh, they say, hang on a second. Yeah, so what they say is, for the reasons set forth above, we conclude that the president may designate an acting director for the CFPB because both the Vacancies Reform Act and the office-specific statute are available to fill a vacancy in that office on the acting basis. So they basically say, look, there are, there are two ways. There are two ways to appoint an interim director. There's having a deputy director. Or the president can appoint, and having the, the deputy, there's a the direct the deputy director just takes over as the interim director, or b the president appoints an interim director, who doesn't have to be the deputy director, and they're saying the president has the choice if the president wants to to uh, appoint someone besides the deputy director to be the interim director, and that's what the president has done. So this came out tonight. This is from again the Justice Department, the Office of Legal Counsel. That's what they said. Uh, that's what they said. So they said that the president has the right to appoint an interim director different from the deputy director. And also tonight, I saw something else. I hope I didn't delete it. Did I delete it? I might have deleted it. Let's see here. Let me find it. Oh, it's so bad. I think I deleted it. I can get it back. It's just going to be taking a second. So the general, the yeah, here it is. In addition to that, the top lawyer of the CFPB said that President Trump does have the right to perform the inter to, to appoint the interim director. So check this out. This is from uh, this was an article tonight from Politico, and it says the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's top lawyer sided with the Justice Department over uh, over President Trump's appointment of Mick Mulvaney to lead the CFPB. Uh, CFPB general counsel, the lead lawyer, Mary McLeod of the CFPB said, Trump did have the legal authority to name an acting director to the Bureau under the Federal Vacancies Reform Act. It is my legal opinion that the president possesses the authority to designate an acting director for the Bureau, McLeod wrote in a November 25th memo to the CFPB leadership team. So we have both the Justice Department saying, yes, the president can appoint a, an interim director who's not the deputy director. And we have the lead lawyer for the CFPB who was actually hired by Richard Cordray, the previous director, uh, she, the lead lawyer of the CFPB says, yes, I agree the president does have the authority to appoint an interim director who's not the deputy director, but the deputy director, Leandra English, is still suing as she is allowed to do. She is still suing and she is claiming that the Justice Department is wrong and that the CFPB lawyer is wrong and that uh, the president actually does not have the right to appoint an interim director different from the deputy director. So what's going to happen tomorrow morning? I cannot imagine, I don't believe it's likely that 
some judge will will respond to the lawsuit by tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning, do do Mick Mulvaney, uh, do Mick Mulvaney and Leander English both walk into the CFBB and say, "I'm the acting director now." Uh, I know Mick Mulvaney says he's showing up to work there as the acting director. So will this will Leandra English, who's the deputy director, show up and say, "No, I'm the acting director." Will she maybe make them throw her out of the building or something? I don't know what will happen. Uh, or maybe she won't show up there and she'll just say, "I'm going to let my lawsuit play out." So that's the believe me, that's like the simple summed up version of uh, of what's going on here. Uh, but just so you know, um, really. You know, it seems like what this comes down to is a legal question, which is, let me try to sum this up. The legal issue is this. The law which created the CFPB says if there's a vacancy in the director, the deputy director takes over as the interim director. That's what the law that created the CFPB says. But there's this other law, the Federal Vacancies Reform Act, that says uh, the president has the power to appoint the interim director for an organization like CFPB. So the question is, how, how do the judges decide? Uh, can these two laws coexist? Does one take precedence over the other? Uh, does, does the fact that the, the law creating the CFPB mentions that the deputy director takes over if there's a vacancy, does that nullify the Federal Vacancies Reform Act, which says the president gets to choose the interim director if the president wants to, or, or, or not. So, and those are legal issues. They're kind of complex. Uh, if you want to read the document and get a sense of some of the issues, uh, you can, I direct you to this uh, Office of Legal Counsel J Department of Justice memo that came out uh, tonight. Um, uh, from the uh, Justice Department to Don McGahn explaining why the Justice Department thinks that President Trump still does have the right to, pro to, to appoint an interim director different than the deputy director. Um, but as I said before, it, it, it basically comes down to a legal issue. Uh, and you get into, to, to figure out how to make a legal decision on this, you have to start getting into what are the language, the specific language and the specific words used in the Federal Vacancies Reform Act and in the bill that created the CFPB. So it's very technical legal reasoning, which is going to ultimately decide this issue uh, in, in uh, ultimately decide the lawsuit. So, but that's that. Now, whether you might have opinions on whether Leandra English should have even filed a lawsuit or whether she should have just said, fine, I'm not going to be the interim director. I'll just let Mick Mulvaney take over, even though I'm the deputy director. You might have an opinion on that. That's a difference question. But uh, that's basically what's going on. So there's this crisis because, let me sum it up one more time. As the headline says, CFPB fight goes to court as Leandra English sues to block Trump's pick as interim director because she thinks she should be interim director. This looks kind of weird here because there's this blue circle rectangle there. There it is. Okay, so that's, that's the best I can do to briefly sum up the issue without getting into legal technicalities. But I'd love to hear what you think about this story. So feel free to write to me on Twitter at Lookner at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. Thank you. Um, boy, uh, we have a couple moderators awake at this late hour. It's so exciting. Webster is here and JC is here. Uh, and so appreciate you two being with us and moderating the chat room this late and also Common Sense and Glenn O on the website. So thank you to the moderators and thank you all for joining us at this late hour. I know, I'm sorry it was late. It was just a, a bit of a scheduling thing tonight where this is, this was the best time to do this for us. So I know it's late, but people can watch it tomorrow morning or later tonight or tomorrow in the afternoon. So I'm going to get to your comments now. Also, if you like our coverage, if you like that we're doing full coverage of this story, um, feel free to support Right Side Broadcasting by donating because your donations are what keeps us on the air. We can't stay on the air without your donations. So you can donate by going to the bottom of the YouTube chat uh, and clicking on the little dollar sign at the bottom of the YouTube chat, or you can go to rsbn.tv slash donate rsbn.tv slash donate. Okay, let's get to your messages here. Okay, so JC, the moderator, writes, and one of the moderators says, so if I get this right, the party can appoint whoever they want for whatever reason, or am I wrong? If so, it's BS. So there's two competing claims here. 
The White House and the Justice Department say if the president wants to, the president can appoint the interim director of the CFPB when the, act, when the current director steps down and there's a vacancy. Now, no one's questioning that President Trump can eventually appoint the permanent director again. The question is, when a director leaves and President Trump eventually, or whoever the president is, in this case, President Trump, President Trump has to nominate a director and then Senate, Senate has to confirm a director, that, that nomination. But what happens in between? The question is, what happens in between the time first director leaves and the second director is appointed and gets confirmed by the Senate? Who is this interim director? Because there's got to be, you know, they need a director to run the place in the interim. And the White House and the Justice Department say the Federal Vacancies Reform Act gives President Trump the right to appoint an interim director if he wants to. The law, the Dodd-Frank law that created the CFPB says if there is a vacancy in interim in director, uh, the deputy director automatically becomes a de de the, the interim director. So that would seem to be give the, the previous director the power to appoint the successor because the previous director is the one who appoints the deputy director. But so there's this question, we have two different ways an interim director could be appointed. One, by the previous director choosing his or her successor. Two, by president, the president choosing the interim director. And the question is, um, uh, is and, and now Leandra English, she thinks, well, since the law says that the deputy director takes over as interim director, then the president can't have the right to appoint an interim director. But the White House and the Justice Department disagree with her. So that's, I know it's complex, but that's the idea here. It, it's, it's the question of, does the president have the right to do it, to appoint an interim director if the president wants to, or is the only way to appoint the interim director, is the only person who has the power to appoint the interim director, the previous director who appoints the deputy director, the successor, to take over when that director leaves. It's so complex. I'm doing my best to keep it simple, but it's so complex. And we're not even getting into the legal issues here. Um, Matt writes, and all these people work at the pleasure of the president. These people are delusional, thinking they have a right to sue. So, well, certainly, uh, well, they, have a, they do have a right to sue. They can sue. Uh, but the question is whether their lawsuit will, will be successful. Uh, and certainly the Justice Department and the White House do not think the lawsuit will be successful. But I think, you know, what, what, what Leandra English, I think, is looking for, whether or not her lawsuit ultimately succeeds, what she would like to happen, I believe, is that she would like there to be a temporary restraining order uh, that would go into place that would let her stay on as the interim director while the court decides the case. I think that might be what one of, something that she's asking for. Let's see. I'm not sure about that though. Yeah, so it, the article in Bloomberg says uh, a judge so it's unclear what will happen Monday morning should both English and Mulvaney show up for work. A hearing isn't scheduled in the lawsuit in the court doc. It doesn't even reflect yet that a judge has been assigned to the case. So the case is going to take a while. Now, a judge could call for an immediate hearing to work out a temporary solution as the parties fight a case without direct precedent. So what Leandra English could be thinking, she might think, well, ultimately, maybe I'll lose the lawsuit, but maybe, but, but the lawsuit will take a while. So maybe I can get a judge to say, well, while this lawsuit is going on, we should let Leandra English be the uh, deputy director. Maybe she's hoping for something like that. And it's possible that the lawsuit would just take so long that by the time the lawsuit has been decided, President Trump has already appointed a next director. And so Leandra English doesn't lose any time as the interim director. Who knows? Um, but, uh, but for right now, it's a little bit confusing what's happening. Uh, we have two different people claiming to be the proper interim director of the CFPB. Let's see here. I'm looking for some comments. Uh, Tony Rose says, there is a very simple solution to all of this obstruction to the president's authority. Congress and the Senate should pass a simple law that someone who was voted by the people to lead your country should be given the power to temporarily fill any government agency vacancy. 
Uh, now, Sean, you wrote in um, with a question about the chat and the moderating. So just so people know, uh, we the chat is handled by the moderators. Um, and if you have any questions about how the chat works or there's some, some issue going on with the chat, the thing to do is ask the moderators. Um, you can also ask the head moderator, Jude, who's at RSBN moderator on Twitter. Also, you could, she can, she's also at uh, moderator at rsbn.tv, moderator at rsbn.tv. So we really uh, don't have, you know, the, the moderators are the ones who control, control the chat. It's their thing. If you talk it through with moderators, if there's some dispute, and once you talk it through with the moderators, you can't reach a, a consensus on this, then feel free to contact us. But really the people to contact, if, if there's questions about the chat, if there's any kind of issues or anything, really the people to work it out with is the moderators. And if you tr really make a good faith effort to work it out with them uh, and you can't find a solution with them, then contact us and we'll see if we can be helpful. But we really like to let, I mean, they're the ones who run the chat room, not us. So. I would, I would talk to them first. You can also talk to, again, the head moderator, moderator at RSBN TV. You can shoot her an email if you have a question about the chat. Um, but that's really the responsibility of the moderator. So again, a person, I'm saying this, one person wrote me with a question, but I like to say that periodically just so people understand how the moderation works. Uh, but hopefully that can all be worked out. American Patriot says, I feel this woman, Leandra English, who's filing the lawsuit is cutting off her nose to spite her face. Doesn't she realize that the president can just fire her? This is an interesting question. So who can she be fired by the president? Well, technically, I think the CFPB, see, the, the, under the law creating the CFPB, there's certain restrictions on whether the president can fire the director. I know that. Uh, I believe like the president has to have certain, the president can't fire the director for no reason. That's written into the CFPB law that the president can only fire the director of the CFPB for certain reasons. I don't know if that applies to the deputy director. So it's possible, I don't know American Patriot, it's possible that under the CFPB, under the statute by with which the CFPB was created, the president doesn't have the power to fire her. Uh, now. Maybe somebody could say something like, well, the president should have the power and therefore the law creating the CFPB is unconstitutional. Then you'd have to have a lawsuit about that. So, but all I'm saying is I, I, it might, there might be complexities there about what kind of fire, firing power the president has in that situation. I, I'm not, I don't have that information to answer that question right now. It's a good question. Uh, let's see. Tony Rose says, hi, Steve. I would have thought that Trump trumps a director who leaves, but with Congress tying Trump's hands, he should simply fire the deputy director. P.S. Love your show from Portugal. Thanks for watching, Tony. Yeah, so the issue here is that the, the law that was passed that created the CFPB has a provision in it that says when there's a temporary vacancy in the director position, the deputy director fills that position. So, so the, that law specifies that. Now, the White House and the Justice Department say, well, there's, other, there's this other law that gives the president the power. So the president can either choose to go with what the, the law creating the CFPB says, or the president can choose his or her own interim director. So, uh, but again, the difficulty here in succession comes from the fact that the law that created the CFPB specifies that the deputy director becomes the interim director if there's a vacancy in the director position. So that's, if it, if it didn't say anything, then we wouldn't have a problem here, but that's where this difficulty is coming in. We are taking some more of your comments here on this uh, story. You can write to me at at Lookner on Twitter if you have comments. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. American Patriot says, I believe the Vacancies Reform Act should be the one followed. It was passed in 1998. Dodd-Frank wasn't passed in two, until 2011. So what you're saying is that you think, American Patriot, since the Vacancies Reform Act, you think gives the president to power, the power to, uh, to appoint the interim director for a body like the CFPB that since that, that was passed in 1998 and Dodd-Frank, which created the CFPB, I think it was created in 2010. You say 2011, maybe I'm wrong though. Uh, but anyways, you're saying since Dodd-Frank came after that, then, uh, then it shouldn't um, invalidate, I guess you could say, the provision of the Vacancies Reform Act and that the Vacancies Reform Act should, uh, should, 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 not be, is not, should not be nullified by a law that was passed after it is what you're saying. And Sean, I saw, I see you have another message here, and I'll just say again, you know, uh, if you have uh, an issue with the chat and it, it doesn't get resolved to your satisfaction after talking to the moderators, you can always uh, message uh, feedback at rsbn.tv, write it out in an email, and uh, you can also message, I would highly encourage you to message the, the first, the moderator, moderator at rsbn.tv. Uh, you know, sometimes these questions come up or things going on in the chat once in a while. So, but really the first person to message is moderator at, at rsbn.tv. Um, you can CC feedback at RSBN TV if you'd like on that, but hopefully you guys can work it all out. I hope. Um, Tommy Deplorable, and thank you again to the moderators for staying up late tonight and uh, helping us out in the chat room. Much appreciated. Tommy Deplorable says, sounds like all bases covered. Deputy director takes over until replaced by another temporary appointment or permanent director. No gaps, very simple. So I'm a little confused, Tommy, because are you, what I, what I can't tell is who do you think the, de oh, you're saying you think that the deputy director takes over until replaced by another temporary appointment. So do you think that if the president appoints somebody that takes precedence over the deputy director. Is that what you're saying? If the president, you think the president can appoint an interim director that takes precedence over the deputy director? I think that might be what you're saying, Tommy, but I'm not sure. Free Roger Stone says, the moderators are great for the chat room. Also says, make, make Leandra English resign. That's what Free Roger Stone says. Okay, we're gonna be on a few minutes longer here. Um, if you guys have further comments or questions you wanna write in, write to me at, at Lookner on Twitter, at Lookner. Also, again, we are viewer supported, so if you enjoy our coverage, uh, please consider donating and helping us stay on the air. You can donate uh, at the bottom of the chat room by clicking on the dollar sign there or going to uh, rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate. Oh, and I forgot to check. I just want to make sure I got any email people sent me. Okay, I'm caught up there. I think I am caught up on my Twitter messages. So basically, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, what's going to, you know, well, the big question is, so, so Mick Mulvaney is definitely showing up uh, for, he's definitely showing up to take what he thinks is his rightful position as the, uh, as the acting, as the interim director of the CFPB. Now, this is kind of important because, so the CFPB, President Trump is not a fan of the CFPB. Uh, he thinks it is, it, it overreaches what it should be doing. Um, and if Mick Mulvaney comes in as the interim director, there's speculation that he will uh, he will bring some changes to the CFPB. He might uh, overturn or change some of the initiatives and, and uh, that and things they've been working on. Um, perhaps he will uh, get rid of some of the rec regulations or or moderate some of the regulations they've put out there uh, on different financial institutions. Uh, where and uh, I'm not sure about Leandra English, but I believe, I believe I read something that said 
she would be more likely to keep the current policies in place. So whether Leandra English or Mick Mulvaney becomes the interim director is actually an important question because uh, if Mick Mulvaney becomes the interim director, as it looks like he will, at least for now, uh, he might change a bunch about the CFPB, about what, what the kind of initiatives they're undertaking, how much regulation they put on financial institutions and what kind of regulations, uh, and probably lean toward res less regulations and lessening the current regulations, whereas Leandra English is much more likely to keep the current regulations in place. So it's actually very important uh, who ends up taking over this bureau in the interim until President Trump appoints a new permanent director and that director is confirmed. I'm just seeing if it's a if um, if there's anything about Mulvaney going into work. I, I could have sworn that there was something that Mulvaney said he was going to work tomorrow. Now, Tom Cotton did release a statement on this, and he said, uh, one of the viewers also sent this to me earlier. I spotted it now, but I forget who sent this to me. I want to give you credit, but I can't find it now. So whoever sent me this, oh, just Laura sent me this. Um, so uh, it says, Tom Cotton said, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is a rogue, unconstitutional agency. Leandra English's lawsuit to install herself as the acting director against uh, the president's explicit direction is just the latest lawless action by the CFPB. She doesn't have a legal leg to stand on as her own general counsel is conceded and the Department of Justice had concluded. The president should fire her immediately and anyone who disobeys Director Mulvaney's orders should also be fired summarily. The constitution and the law must prevail against the supposed resistance. So maybe President Trump does have in theory the power to, to fire her. Uh, maybe the, the law creating the Dodd, the, the law creating the CFPB didn't say anything about uh, any kind of firing conditions uh, for the deputy director. Um, another thing here is uh, I've been saying interim director, and I guess the correct term is acting director that I should have been saying instead of saying interim director. But the acting director would be the interim director until the, more, the permanent director is appointed. So Tom Cotton is not a fan of the Leandra English lawsuit. Well, I can't find any tweets about uh, Mulvaney saying he'll show up, but like Jennifer Jacobs from Bloomberg said, it's unclear what will happen Monday morning should both Leandra English and Mick Mulvaney show up for work. By the way, I will, if I hear new updates about this tomorrow, I will be posting on my Twitter account. I follow uh, breaking news and post about it on Twitter. So you can follow me on Twitter at Lookner at L-O-O-K-N-E-R. And uh, we come on with these breaking news stories all the time, as you can see. So if you want to know when we're coming on the air with the uh, breaking news videos, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and click the notifications bell so you get notified when we're coming on the air. Rod Free Roger Stone thinks Mick Mulvaney will shut down CFPB. I don't know about that. I feel like that would be a difficult thing politically to do, to shut down CFPB. Uh, Sean writes in, what is the normal policy of CFPB and has any president in history intervened and appointed someone else? So the thing is, CFPB has only been around since 2010, I think. And I think Richard Cordroy might be the first director. Yeah, see, he was the first director. So this situation has never come up with the CFPB because he's the first director. So there's never been a director vacancy for the CFPB because he is the first director. Now, uh, I think the Office of Legal Counsel, in their memo, the Justice Department, they claim while this exact situation is unprecedented, they say, they cite other cases which they feel are similar enough to this situation to provide a precedent, and they think those other cases support the ruling that President Trump has the right to appoint the acting director. But ultimately, this could be a question that the courts decide. Um, so so this, this, the Justice Department, this, it's the executive branch, it's not the judicial branch. So the Justice Department can say this, but it's up to the, if it's a lawsuit about this, ultimately the judicial branch will decide what they think about whether President Trump has the right to appoint the acting director or not. But uh, there's really no precedent for this because he was the first director. So this hasn't happened before. All right, so I think 
at this point, we are going to wrap up this stream. Sorry we came on so late, but better better late than never, I think. That's my opinion here. Uh, so, and you know, people will get to watch it tomorrow and everything. I wanna thank everybody for tuning in at this late hour. Thank you to the moderators, JC and Webster, staying up late with us tonight. I think. Well, Webster, I think you're in California, but it's still kind of late. Maybe JC's in California too, if I remember right. Uh, but anyways, thanks for staying up late. Thanks for all of you for writing in your comments and your questions, much appreciated. Uh, and uh, hello to everybody. Uh, thanks to uh, moderators on the website and every hello to everybody watching on Facebook as well as YouTube. And, and what was I gonna say? Subscribe to us on YouTube, click the notifications bell to know when we're coming on the air with our next video. Follow us on Facebook, Right Side Broadcasting, on Twitter, at RSB Network. You can follow me on Twitter at, at Lookner. I post about breaking news all the time. And uh, thank you for saying thanks in the chat room. Janine says thanks. Thank you, Janine. Thank you, P-Cell. Seems like it was getting a little, uh, you know, some spirited discussion going on in the chat room tonight, which I think can be a good thing. Linda, thank you. Case Critters, thank you. Pumping Iron Mike. Killtron 5000, thank you. Gingerella, thank you for watching. N2 Peace, a lot of people saying thanks in the chat room, so I'm just saying thanks back. Chris Link, thank you. Jason Thornton, Jason Thornton, you love late night live streams. I thought of you when we came on this late. Rooster Cogburn, thank you. Grant Patillo, thanks. Thomas Schroeder, thanks. All right, we're going to wrap it up. I got to go to bed. I'm on Eastern time. So thank you, JC. Thanks, Miss Rob Mob. Oh, and let me mention one more time. If you want to donate and help out Right Side Broadcasting, help us stay on the air. Bottom of the YouTube chat, click on the dollar sign or go to rsbn.tv slash donate, rsbn.tv slash donate. Even small donations are welcome because those are what keeps us broadcasting. Okay, we're wrapping it up now. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Hope you have a great night. Uh, and uh, we look forward to covering the news for you this week. But until next time, I am Steve Luckner. Have a great night. We'll see you soon.